town of Haverhill is not a new town, but an overspell town. Now, it's not a very nice word, overspell, but it's a word that says what it means. If you've got too much of something, then something needs to be spilt over. And what we have far too much of in this country at the moment, in our cities, and particularly in London, is people. Uh, some of them must be spilt out into country towns, not only so that they can live more comfortable lives, but so they can give elbow room to the people left behind. Now, some critics think that the government hasn't moved fast enough in the evacuation of our cities. And in fact, although it does encourage industrial firms to move out of London, what usually happens is that as one firm goes out, another one moves into the same place, bringing even more employees with it. And London is now reaching bursting point. It's here that the London County Council's overspill plan comes in. The London County Council, as it rebuilds on overcrowded slum property, is putting up less housing than before. And this means that more and more people are going onto the rapidly expanding housing lists. It's from these housing lists that people are invited to go out to the expanded towns. Towns expanded with the financial help of the London County Council. About 1,500 of us from London have now come to live in Haverhill under the LCC overspill scheme. For most of us, it was a chance for a house, and this we were all very pleased to take. Now, these are our new houses that you can see around us, and I think most of us are very comfortable in them. But, Dreen, you have been here five years. How have, have you settled down? Well, I must admit that when I first came here, I hated it. I thought I'd come to the back of the end. But I made an effort and I went out to meet people, and I joined something, and now I can say I've made a lot of friends and I'm perfectly content. I don't think I would have settled at all if it hadn't been for joining these outside organisations. And the only thing is, you must go out to meet people because the country, the people from the country will not come and meet you. They're, they're very quiet and you have to get to know them. But um, also the industries here are very poor. They, they bring such um, small industries in and they're not, not big enough for the amount of men that, that need the jobs. Um, as I know, I found um, my husband had to um, go to London for six months to work and travel backwards and forwards for <coughs> six months which wasn't very satisfactory, but um, apart from that, um, also I'd like to see some more buses. We have no buses at all. We can't <laughs> get anywhere. Um, we have a car, fortunately, but quite a few people haven't, and uh, therefore I think that uh, we need these things, you know. We yes, must have a bus yes. or something. What do you think about that, Pam? Yes, well, I think, as I say, that the bus service, if you haven't got a car, you're tied to the town. Right? Oh, yes. and, um, I would like to say that since we came from Bermondsey, we've only been since February, but um, we're getting settled. I've made a lot of friends through going out and meeting people. And um, I've noticed with our little girl that um, she's been so much better, yeah, healthier, yes. oh, yes. put on a lot of weight for the children. Mm. Yes. And I think when we look at her and we see what it's done just this few months being here, we, we say, well, it was agree. worth it. I tried yes. to in the meantime, one must be very grateful for the few industrial firms who have the wisdom to move out of London. The wisdom to see that it is not only to the advantage of the country that they do so, but a very great advantage to themselves as well. We are architectural metal workers and neon sign and lighting specialists. In fact, this month just sees the completion of our second year at Haverhill. All our men that we move from London, and from our point of view, the move is working extremely well. Well, Frank, you've been with the company now for six years. What do you think of the move to Haverhill? What a good move. I quite like it down here. Like most people do. It's got these snakes. So, uh, like most these things. Uh, but I think they'll all be ironed out in, in time, anyway. Big snake. It's all these charts for me, isn't it? No two ways about that. Eh? No. How's your wife find things down here? Well, it's tougher for the women, there's no doubt about that. I mean, we're all right, we come up with a firm, with blokes, you know, and you're with them all day, but you pick a woman up, we dump in the middle of something and say, there you are, and she's got to get on with it. I believe your wife had joined one or two of the organisations. Oh, yeah, she's she's well, actually, we do, we do more socially now than uh, we did in London. Well, here, they sort of make you join and they want something you can do it and then uh, well if we know what you're doing you're in it and what do you think of things peter well i find it not too bad a bit of a tear away from london but uh, i've got mainly what i wanted a house traveling the mean it is are not very good It'd be even worse than we 
if they take the railway away, as they're talking about, uh, the uh, shop's reasonable, could be better. But with a young baby, how's your wife find things down here? Not too bad. The uh, be better, I suppose, when they get the welfare centre clinic sorted out and finished. And what do you think of the shops? Well, it's finds the cost of living a little bit higher down here than in London, but uh, on the whole they're not too bad. You can get mostly what you want at uh, reasonable prices. Now for a young unmarried chappy. Well, um, I think it's been a, a very good move as far as I'm concerned. Um, I like the people up here. I've settled in very well indeed, and I most certainly wouldn't go back to London. I think it's a marvellous place for young people. The main snag is, for entertainment for young people, is they have to go to Cambridge. But um, that can be managed. Um, I know most of them either go up by car or motorbike, or else they can go up by train. But that means that they can't have the evening up there. I think that has been the main snag up here, is transport for young people for entertainments. In Haverhill, there is very, very little. In Cambridge, there's a lot, but it, the trouble is getting there. I'll take it from what you've said, Peter, that you're quite happy here. I wouldn't go back to London. Yes, um, you're quite right. I wouldn't go back to London. I'm perfectly happy here, and I think it's a marvellous place. Now, first of all, before they can be invited, of course, firms have to go on ahead and create the job. So that's the pattern of it. The firm goes first, and then the people make their choice. If you can call it a choice at all, when it's a choice between staying behind in a rather dismal slum in a city they like, or going to bright new housing in a town they don't want to go to at all. Strange enough, some of them decide to stay behind. But maybe it's not so surprising. Speaking as half a Londoner and half an East Anglian, I don't think there'd be any great collision between these two groups of people. But I do understand this business of the curious magic that the big city has, the magic of London that holds people there, and if they go away, it draws them back again. And it's for this reason that I sympathize with the latest ideas of the planners who think that we should overspill not just 5,000 people onto a town of 5,000, as is being done at Haverhill, but 150,000 people onto a town which already has 150,000. Now, it's a proposal of this kind that's being looked at this month by the government for the expansion of the county town of East Suffolk, Ipswich. And the man who has prepared the study for the government believes there are three great advantages here. One is that you're taking a big bite at the problem instead of just nibbling at it. Secondly, by the means of the great influx of people, you have an opportunity of creating something of the magic of the city. And thirdly, and perhaps most important of all, because you're moving so much industry in, you have the chance of giving a great variety of jobs to all the people in the area. And the planner, Leonard Vincent, believes that this could be a very settled and satisfied sort of community. London is giving new life to this quiet Suffolk market town. The clerk of the Haverhill Urban Council, Mr. William Blake, tells his part of the story. Now, after many years of preparatory work, the Haverhill Town Expansion Scheme really began in June of 1958, when the then Minister of Housing and Local Government, Mr. Henry Brooke, laid the foundation stone of the first factory. During the five years which have elapsed since that time, 22 firms have moved to Haverhill under the scheme, and five new firms are having factories built for them. When these latter are completed in a month or two's time, there will have been erected over 250,000 square foot of factory space, and work will have been found for 700 new people. 531 council houses have already been built, and 281 more are in course of construction. In addition, 120 private houses have been built, and most of these are occupied by people who have moved to Haverhill under the scheme. Now, of course, in a scheme of this sort, problems are bound to arise, and you have heard of some of them already. With regard to employment, the um, council has always tried to get diversity of employment so that if there should be a slump in, in any particular industry, there is alternative employment available. We've also heard that uh, sometimes that there is a lack of entertainment. Well, now, quite clearly, in a small country town, there cannot be the same variety of entertainment as there is in London. But here we have a cinema, two dance halls, bingo halls, and so on, and there is a large variety of both recreational 
and cultural facilities available in the center which is attached to the new secondary school and in the many clubs and associations which flourish in the town. With regard to shopping, few complaints are heard about the shopping facilities in Haverhill. This is not surprising as under the scheme very many fine new shops have been built. Now a word about population. When the scheme started in 1958, the population of Haverhill was about 4,200. It is now something over 6,500 and the first expansion scheme is nearly halfway completed. So successful has this scheme been that both the London County Council and the Haverhill Council have applied to the Ministry of Housing and Local Government to carry out a similar scheme in the future. Uh, under this second scheme, the population is planned to increase to 18,500 by 1981. After that, well, who knows? Now, in conclusion, of course, this town expansion scheme has given to both the members and officers of the Haverhill Council a considerable amount of extra work. Uh, however, they have been wholeheartedly behind the scheme and they have not minded this one little bit. In the first place, of course, they took the government at their word and were pioneers in carrying out this scheme of town expansion. Because of this, and with the aid of the other participating authorities, they have been enabled to provide homes from people living in London, often under very unsatisfactory conditions. And secondly, and lastly, they have been enabled to bring what was undoubtedly a dying town, their town of Haverhill, into a flourishing and growing community.